Hey buddies, a big thing that's come out of this week's controversy about the YouTube, the whole content ID system that people have been considering to be apparently a new one? No, it's the old content ID system that's been affecting independent creators for a very long time now, for the last about six months. Right around, it started to ramp up when Nintendo entered the fray. You remember all those blog blasts that went out about how Nintendo's flagging everybody's videos? Well, independents have been feeling that for a long time now, and for the most part, people under MCNs, or multi-channel networks have people have been coining this week, uh, have not been affected because they've been immune. Why is that? Well, let's talk about what a multi-channel network is and why it exists, and who needs them. The simple answer to who needs a multi-channel network is simple. YouTube does. You don't. YouTube created multi-channel networks, or rather opened the door for them to apply and to become a part of their program, because they didn't want to be hands-on with the wrangling of partners, independents like myself, although those do still exist. But although we do exist still, we used to exist in much greater numbers, and that was a problem for YouTube, because the more partners that existed under their monetization pro platform, the more they had to wrangle and pay attention to them to make sure that they weren't abusing the platform. This creates a huge logistical problem for them. They need to dedicate human resources to it, and if they are doing it themselves hands-on, it opens them up to litigation if copywritten content is used improperly. A solution to that was Content ID, and it was supposed to be a weapon that basically YouTube handed over to the copyright owners. Um, they could sign up to the Content ID system, submit their library, and apply it to the entire catalog of YouTube videos to find automatically the hundreds upon hundreds of hours that are uploaded every minute to YouTube, automatically find infringing content, and apply their own advertisements to it, or if they want, they can take that content down. This is supposed to alleviate any liability that YouTube has in the use of its platform, basically saying we're on your side guys. And so the Skynet of YouTube was applied across the board to partners on YouTube, but it seems that we are learning now that not all partners were considered equal. Those underneath multi-channel networks were to some degree not feeling the full force of the system, and that was probably because of YouTube's trust for multi-channel networks to take care and look after their own, to make sure that no infringements were happening within their network. Well, that didn't quite work out, because in August of this year, Full Screen Networks, one of the biggest MCN, was sued by the National Music Publishers Association for the, and this is a quote, endemic unlicensed use of music on its network for the use of covers and um, music videos, new fan-made music videos that Full Screen Networks was making money off of because its partners were making money off of. YouTube saw this lawsuit and said, guys, get in here, you're not doing your job, you need to look after your partners and take responsibility for the content that they upload. And as a side note that's kind of funny, the leader of Full Screen Networks, the one, the CEO, the one that was sued by the Music Publishers Association, is George Strompolis, who is actually YouTube's partner management coordinator, the head of make, getting big partners like um, What the Buck and stuff over to YouTube way back in the day before he left to start his own company. Just a funny side thought there. So YouTube started to spank the multi-channel networks, but not quite, because they said to them, don't worry guys, you're not gonna have to do any extra work, you're not gonna have to make more staff look after your huge network of partners that you've signed up. You're just going to have to categorize them now. You either make them managed or affiliates. The managed ones are the ones that you will take responsibility for. You're going to look after them like you were supposed to look after the entire group of your partners. Make sure that they're not infringing on copyrights or when they use copywritten works that it is fair use or that it is licensed. You're basically going to do your job just with those guys. Then you can throw the rest of your channels to the wild so that they will be back and applied to the content ID system just like everybody else who has not been a part of a network has been applied to for a very long time now. And I want to note something very important here that speaks to the main question behind this vlog. And that is that the multi-channel networks started this dialogue with YouTube back in mid-October, possibly even before then, but mid-October is when it was reported upon by adweek.com and I'll link to that article below. Make no mistake, the multi-channel networks knew that this Content ID Armageddon was coming a long time ago and they did not 
warn their partners until just days before it came into effect. And that begs the question, why do partners need multi-channel networks? And the answer that I have come to, the conclusion that I have drawn outside of my own experience, and just now, as this has all come to a head, I have fully realized that there are no benefits, or at least very few, to the large majority of small partners underneath these multi-channel networks. And I want you guys to give me anecdotal evidence otherwise. I'm trying to collect the benefits of being under these networks. But all I can find is anecdotes from the very, very large channels. And even in that case, people like Angry Joe, a very, very large channel, are saying that they are being dramatically, adversely affected by Content ID and that they have supposedly not been put into the managed partner category. So for now, that's what I leave you with. I want you guys to help me be my ears and eyes. It is so hard to collect all of this stuff. I have personally reached out to partnership networks on Twitter, um, mainly the big two at this point. I have gotten some responses, only one response from Machinima. They said that they have your backs. We have your backs, partners. He later deleted that tweet mysteriously. I asked him to confirm that he had indeed known about this since October, and he says that people are misinterpreting and misconstruing the information. Um, I asked him for clarification as to whether or not they actually did know about this in October. I just wanted to know true or false, and he won't respond at this point. I'm hoping that maybe if we all start creating a dialogue about this, they are going to be forced to admit to the partners that they go out and shotgun blast trying to bring into their network, knowing full well that the only benefit there is is to them as a profitable corporation um, for bringing them in and taking a slice of the revenue that they generate. Uh, but I will reserve my final judgment until I've heard from you guys and hopefully some of you guys in my audience are actual partners that I can hear first-hand information from, but I will accept anything that you can direct me towards tweets or articles that um, uh, that describe the relationship between multi-channel networks and their partners, positive and negative. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, wait for more of these vlogs as all of this unfolds. It's very interesting, and I'm so glad that finally everybody's talking about it instead of us little we independent partners who have had to silently um, uh, be subjected and suffer alone in the darkness for so long now. I love you.